All right, welcome back to Morning Live. As I told you earlier, we want to talk about the World Intellectual Property Day, which will be happening tomorrow. Actually, it will be marked tomorrow all over the world. And this time round, the theme is actually inclined towards sports. Intellectual property, because now it's a multi-billion industry, which not so many people are keen to get kind of now invest in. But this year's theme is actually now matter sports and so many things, including endorsements. And with us in the studio is Mr. Wakil himself, when Mark Omu who will be taking us through this conversation which is kind of very sensitive not so many people are actually talking about it but emphasis will be on the digital age Wanamak Omoga good morning good morning uh, good to see you man yeah thank you uh, sorry I woke, I woke you up very early today I ah. should notice yeah, yeah it's okay it's okay. okay now when you talk about world intellectual property day maybe just let's leave the world aside yes. Now, intellectual property this is something that uh, has been in contention tag of war for so many years maybe you can tell us about intellectual property yeah intellectual property in itself uh, concerns the the regime of laws that concern themselves with the protection of the expression of human mind okay of the human mind through a tangible but it has to be expressed through a tangible form okay so it is not the protection of an idea in itself mm -hmm. but the protection of the expression okay of the idea in a tangible form okay that is what in a in a nutshell what intellectual property is all about okay yes. now when you talk about even the cases people actually take each other to courts uh, x versus y yes. y versus x um so many things are happening and of course right now in the wake of this digital age we have so many people now even uh, plagiarism is in the high like original work is not being appreciated now so far from from your end from your now expertise do you think now we're lagging behind people are still now kind of just trying to uh, shove each other because now the original content is being taken for granted well you know the laws are there the laws have been actually there for a yeah, while yeah. i don't know if uh, the, the issue re uh, is uh, one that regards uh, implementation of the laws okay so for example when you talk about plagiarism yeah. there are laws dealing with copyright absolutely yeah, yeah. Uh, the copyright act has been there since the since 2001 mm -hmm. and even before then you could enforce uh, laws relating to intellectual property through common law yeah, even sure. be, even before the enactment mm -hmm. of the la of mm -hmm. the act mm -hmm. but uh, i would also say that to a certain extent there are certain mm, certain doctrines or certain uh, certain aspects of okay. intellectual property mm -hmm. that are not present in our laws currently. Okay. For example, if you talk about uh, folklore, you know folklore is an African thing. Okay. Uh, this thing like ch children go and sing around, singing games and all that. Okay. There's intellectual property in those singing games. Okay. Okay. But uh, you find that the intellectual property, the mm -hmm. protection that is guaranteed under the Copyright Act is only ambivalent. Mm -hmm. okay. It is just mentioned, but there's no substantive provision that right. deals with the protection of uh, folklore. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Um, original content creators, for example, now, we, we had a problem uh, with a foreign company that actually um, uh, took the Hakuna Matata um, uh, slogan and made it theirs. They actually patented it and uh, we were very worried about that. But at some point we were told we should not worry about it. It's yeah. ours, it's ours original. Now, there's so much confusion even going on through now understanding intellectual property because now, for example, Muga and I, we can actually create something here in studio, becomes so nice out here and someone now just takes it, the original content and kind of makes it better. Now, is there some mutual agreement between these two people, maybe a group of people that in Indeed, this is the original work. I want to kind of tamper with it a little bit and then make it better or maybe even reduce the, the quality. What do you think about this? Now, maybe in order to, uh, I should start by say, uh, talking mm -hmm. about uh, copyright in itself mm -hmm. because there's copyright and there's a trademark and a lot of these things come in. But copyright in itself, the original content, you know, when you sp talk about originality, yeah. the content is original in the fact that it has never been produced by someone else. If you look at, for example, the work of uh, Shakespeare yeah. and uh, Julius Caesar, mm -hmm. there's, a, there's the Soeli version of it that was done by Mwalimu Julius Nyerere, yeah, yeah. Julius Kaisari, mm -hmm. which has copyright that is separate and distinct from that one that lies in the work of uh, William Shakespeare. Okay. Or look at the song by... Uh, this, this song Malaika yeah. by Fadili, uh, Fadili Williams. Williams. There are over 61 versions of that. Of course, different renditions. Is there consent? Different renditions. renditions. Different renditions. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, a while back, there was an issue regarding the national anthem, the Kenyan national yeah, anthem. Yeah. 
But look at this thing. It's a different rendition of the thing. It is not the exact, the, the thing. exact thing. It's not the exact thing. So rendition can change everything. The rendition can change, but the, the, it, it has its own copyright. Yeah, yeah. Remember that copyright subsists automatically. You don't have to register yeah, it. Yeah, sure. But in order to prove it as evidence, then you mm. need to register it. Okay, okay. So it's a different rendition. Okay. Yes. Okay. So interesting, interesting. So no one gets into trouble, for example, when I, I take someone's music and remix at big time in this country. So no one will take me to court. You know, there, there's an issue, particularly the issues that have arisen concerning YouTube, mm -hmm. Where you find that there's an infringement notice that is sent to someone who has posted this video on YouTube. Okay, okay. Now, what happens is that YouTube has a, has a digital rights management system mm -hmm. that allows an automatic, like if someone feels that his, his intellectual property right is being yeah, infringed, you can actually then you report. Can, yeah, mm -hmm. then you just report it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But then the, it, it's automatic in the system, it okay. just sends the notice. Mm -hmm. So after sending maybe three notices, mm -hmm. then it removes the video. Okay. Now, uh, I suppose that the reason YouTube introduced this was, uh, I, I, I don't know if you remember Napster. Uh, yeah, some some yeah, 30 years yeah, ago, it, yeah. was a, it was a music sharing yeah. app, app or a yeah, music sure. sharing website. Mm -hmm. So there was an issue with the A&M a records mm -hmm. about uh, sometime about the year 2000, 2001. Mm -hmm. And the Court of Appeals of the United States of the Ninth Circuit said that okay. there's something called contributory infringement. Okay. So that while someone, you, you may not be the, the primary or the original infringer, mm -hmm. but if a website or an app is continuing that infringement, yeah. then that app is contributing to that infringement. Okay. So I suppose uh, as a way to protect itself, uh, YouTube introduced that measure uh -huh. where there's an uh -huh. automatic, you get an infringement notice mm -hmm. automatic. Mm -hmm. But I do not think, especially with uh, the different renditions of songs and all that, okay. you can make a complaint okay. to, to YouTube. Okay. And, and make out your case. And I don't mm -hmm. think there's any infringement in that sense. Okay. Yeah. In this country, we have these artistic uh, events. We yeah. have even drama festival. We have music festivals. And trust me, I've attended these events for quite some time when I was still back in high school. Yes. I could hear the same thing year in, year out from different schools. And these are different, actually, tutors, creators. But there was a problem. At some point, guys felt tired that indeed my original work is being misused. Someone went to court and sued around 32 schools for using this job. Now, um, that case was thrown away. Maybe, uh, maybe give us a reason. Because now, this was a narrative converted into music again, converted into a play. But this guy said, I'm the one who kind of, uh, not even kind of, I'm the one who came up with the real content. But the court threw this case away. 32 government schools were sued mm. for this one guy. Yes. Yeah, maybe the reason. It comes back to the the, the, the the point that I made a bit earlier. Rendition. It, you see, it's a different. It's not the original work. Okay. Look at the the song covers that people mm -hmm. do on YouTube. Yeah. It's not the original work. So there's no. It's a different rendition of the work. Uh -huh. So it's original in itself, mm -hmm. original in the sense that it has been performed by this person mm -hmm. in its own rendition. Okay, yeah. so I, you're allowed to wake up one morning and just listen to your song done by another person in a different, a different version. Uh -huh. Is that fair? Because okay. now, is it fair? Like you've worked so hard day and night to write this, this song, to write this article, and then someone has just remixed it. Is it fair? For, for, for God's sake, like you wake up and then, like for example, Saudi Sol. Can yes. wake up one day and then I was came to remember song yeah, to fly into with a different version. Mm. I, I believe they'll go to court. But the rendition part, yes, yes expand you, more. You are this. entitled to go to court. Yeah. There are some instances, especially I, I think it, dep it depends on the circumstances and the entire substance of what you think has been remixed or uh -huh. what is the, the value of the contribution that this person, uh, person has made to the mm. original work. Is it something that has just been made in passing? Maybe okay. has changed a word or two there. Okay. Then I think each case should be determined in, on, it, on its own merits. Okay. So that let's not make it blanket. Mm -hmm. But the, the rendition part is really important for people to understand that it's not every day or it's not every time that you think that hey, I, I, I can hear some beats to my song in some certain song. <laughs> yeah, there. it's true. There's That's something there. It, yeah. It, it is, yeah, so yeah. that um, the court will be looking at this and saying, okay, fine, mm -hmm. uh, you, made those, you made the original work, but what is the extent of the contribution of this second person? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about trademarks. Because now this is a place where you have Puma and then you wear Parma. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean, eh? yeah. It's crazy out here. You have Puma, you have Parma, you have Fubu, you have Fuba, you have Adidas, you have Adidas. So guys are trying to distance themselves from these things. Now, for, for example, let, let, let's take a look at uh, sports merchandise, Adidas. Um, we have so much out here. Uh, Adidas, Adudis, <laughs> you know these things, yes. eh? 
How can they react to this? Because already these guys have just kind of distanced themselves from this. Yeah, especially for that case, that is very wrong. Uh, if you look at uh, what people are trying to do, they're trying to uh, pass off their work or pass off their, mm -hmm. you know, this, this is a brand that has accumulated a lot of goodwill and yes. a lot of, yeah. From the colors. From, from the colors yes, and everything. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that if someone says FUBU, you know, yeah. this is a good quality yeah, item. Absolutely. So if you say FUBA, <laughs> then uh, the ordinary person may not, uh, yeah, at the time of purchase, yeah. may not really be in a position to differentiate between yeah. the two. Yeah. So this person is trying to benefit of the yeah. business goodwill of the other person. Yeah. And that is very wrong. Mm -hmm. So in such a case, then usually, usually especially in Kenya, you'd go to court. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can secure an injunction okay. yeah, to stop this person from uh, continuing to produce these items. Mm -hmm. The items themselves, there's something you can do that is called, you can ask for an order for account account for profits. Okay. So that whatever profits they may have gained from the sale of these items, they account for them so that those profits are remitted to you. Wow, interesting. And uh, okay. separately from that, uh, you can actually, whatever they have, probably they have, a, a warehouse full of fuba shoes. Fuba shoes. Yes, mm -hmm. they can they can be made to call them up. They can be brought up and then destroyed because wow. yeah, that is that is an outright. So it's not a matter of like I've distanced myself from the original uh, brand. It's just a matter of like yeah, that's kind of now um, out of context. Or do you, do you think maybe people can go to court and maybe fight this out? Because now when for example you have fubu and they come up with fuba, that's my fuba. I don't care <laughs> about fubu. Like for example, when I say in court, I've never heard about fubu. When I was actually coming up with FUBA, yeah, what do you do now? You know, uh, okay, for trademarks, you know, there's the issue of registrability where you have to register in order to secure protection. But there's also protection for brands that are well known. Okay, mm? okay, okay. There's a case in South Africa where there's a, there, there was an issue with the McDonald's restaurant. Yes. Yeah, so uh, someone came up and said, okay, there's no McDonald's in South Africa, so yeah. let, me, let me begin my own McDonald's. Mm -hmm. But it, it emerged that this is a brand that is well known yeah. worldwide, so that it yeah. doesn't have to have been registered in South Africa. Mm -hmm. So if you do your FUBA, what 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 is your intention? The intention was that you had you, you intended to benefit of the goodwill of yeah, Fubu. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Indeed, amazing. So taking a short break, when you come back now, I want to talk about the theme for this year's event because the theme is mostly inclining to the sports uh, content. Now, sports content, trust me, from merchandise, from sponsorships. As I told you earlier, it's a multi billion sector. All that coming to you after a short break. Welcome back to Morning Live. And right now we want to focus on intellectual property because this year's theme is all about sports content, sports writers, partnerships, all those things. And I'll insist it's a multi, multi-billion industry and this is where some people get it wrong. People take each other in the corridors of justice to just prove a point. But at the same time, why has it been put that sports is a very important part of this day that will be marked tomorrow, Friday, 26th of April. Every year is actually marked in April 26th. And of course, we just want to talk about the sports personalities, sports brands in this country and of course all over the world. We have the likes of Messi, Ronaldo, who are seeing themselves with the very, very big brands and that's also part of intellectual property which we'll be talking about here in the story the Bonamark Omuga. Now back to sports. The thing about sports is an industry where of course as much as people are falling so much there's a lot of brand visibility. Wow wow from all those big brands in the world from the betting companies all those goodness it's 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 big it's big. Sports is huge sports is huge mm -hmm. and that is why you know people have uh, there's a natural affinity to sports, yeah. whichever sports it may be. Yeah. And there's a wide range of sports that any, anyone can get interested in. It's true that. So these big brands are trying to get into these sports people, these mm -hmm. athletes, and yeah. trying to market themselves. Mm -hmm. When you see that golden bow tie of the Chevrolet or the jersey of Manchester yeah. yeah. United, yeah. so yeah, you, you try to identify with it. Like, it's okay, true. Okay, fine. 
uh, okay, the, the current performance may not be an indication <laughs> of <laughs> But uh, 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 when you see such a big brand advertising and uh, a, a, spo a sports person or an athlete that you like, then you feel a natural affinity to this uh, yeah, brand. It's true that. So that is why the sports is very, very big in terms mm -hmm. of character merchandising, endorsements. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a, a lot, a lot, a mm -hmm. lot of mm -hmm. things to do with the intellectual okay. property in okay. sports. Now, we, we've also had the likes of uh, even big players like Messi, Cristiano Ronaldo, inclining to the paid partnerships. Paid partnerships. Yes. Now, uh, these paid partnerships, I understand. Even in Kenya, we have people in paid partnerships. Yes. Mariga with a betting company, yes. paid partnership. So many guys actually affiliated with these uh, um, companies. But look at their own good. Because now, at the same time, this is a contract. Do you think it also depends on the performance? Now, let, let's just, it's not about intellectual property, but look at the performance also. The bigger picture of now getting this contract. Um, the performance? The performance now on uh, the, the core business, what they're doing now to promote the brand. Now, performance in terms of now what they're doing as a soccer player, as a rugby player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, usually you'd find that uh, they get the, the endorsements or the character merchandising contracts out of what they already do. Yeah. And then uh, you'll find provisions in the contract that they sign with these big brands yeah. uh, requiring them, for example, to participate in certain events yeah. because whatever they do now will be regulated by whatever contract that uh -huh. they sign yeah. because what they do reflects on the brand mm -hmm. that they represent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that uh, if, uh, for example, my personal hero, uh, Mr. Eliud Kipchoge, okay. uh, was to get, uh, for example, some... Um, endorsement i know that uh, from nike yeah from, he, even from yeah. nike yeah or, or mm. even from isuzu for example mm. then uh, whatever he does would be representative of the business uh -huh. of isuzu uh -huh. yeah uh -huh. so you have to they have to be regulated, regulated. by contract mm -hmm. mm. breach of contract now for example now a chevrolet okay a chevrolet a isuzu is one thing but still l l let's talk about breach of contract because now we really don't know how these things actually how work because now we have a situation where there's a year Mourinho appeared uh, after a press conference appeared somewhere near a drink <laughs> that was actually a competitor of his uh, endorser so it, it's brought some problem now personalities affiliations and now brands yes. now breach of contract yeah there could arise certain issues about breach of contract there was another another issue like that where uh, iphone mm. yeah you know uh, apple yeah apple was uh apple had a brand ambassador and mm -hmm. then the brand ambassador was captured somewhere using uh, <laughs> an Android phone, and it brought a lot of issues. So that's why it comes back to the issues of uh, the provision, the particular provision of the okay. contract. That okay. if you are big, you are benefiting financially. Mm -hmm. You are benefiting mm -hmm. from the uh, publicity that is being brought to you by this brand. Yeah. Then just do whatever for whatever mm -hmm. duration it mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. Just do whatever the contract says. Yeah. Uh, with the issue of Mourinho, I don't know whether it was inadvertent or not, but... Uh, you know Mourinho is a crazy guy, so I, I don't know <laughs> yeah, 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 so the letter of the, uh, the contract is really important, especially... Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, a lot of people uh, seem to get into these contracts um, however they wish. It's usually good to get good legal counsel, yeah. uh, probably before you get into the, into the contract. Mm -hmm. And then even during the uh, duration of the, or the performance of the contract, mm -hmm. it's good to get continual uh, mm -hmm. legal advice mm -hmm. independent mm -hmm. so yeah. that you, you stay, you, you can get sued. Yeah, sure. Yeah. It's clear in sports we focus more on brands. You know, brands kind of sell sports. Uh, they have these brands, for example, Kenya National Rally Championships. They have these brands actually just sell out this idea. Mm. Now, the, from the fuel, from the petrol stations, from these big entities as, far, as much as oil is concerned. We also have now even the likes of, uh, even in Chelsea, they have their own tires. You see yeah. that they have to, to sell Yokohama, yes. uh, Manchester United, um, Liverpool is a bank. Like, what do you think about now affiliations and the player contract? Because even here in Kenya, we have players who kind of now get confused. It's like some people, they've been told to boost a whiskey in a bar. Now, <laughs> they're, not, they're not actually vowed boosting, drinking an our brand. It becomes a problem. Now, affiliation also. Do you think the loyalty should now be kind of a, yes, we have a contract, but the loyalty. Talk about the loyalty and, then, of course, breaching it now. Uh, I would say that perhaps it... Uh one should look at what one does in public because this brand, whatever you do yeah. as per the contract, it's mm -hmm. supposed to have an effect on the public, yeah. on the perception of the public. 
So, I do not think that uh, uh, within the confines of your home, yes. when you are bound by the terms of a contract uh -huh. that you should drink a particular alcoholic beverage, uh -huh. that if you are found drinking something else uh -huh. within the confines of your home, uh -huh. there would be an uh -huh. issue uh -huh. where there is no publicity or yeah. anything. Yeah. Uh, the other issue arises where there is a, there's a team contract. There's a team contract perhaps with a sponsor. Mm -hmm. A sponsor is sponsoring a particular uh, team. Yeah. And then there's an individual player in the mm -hmm. team yeah. who, are, who, is a, who has a contract for endorsement with a different company. Okay. Then there may some issues there may There may be some issues. Yes. Okay. Now, Umuga, uh, yes, uh, we, let's do it in Kenya. Let's talk about us, Kenya. Let's leave alone the likes of Messi. Uh, look at our players now benefiting from these brands. It's been kind of a journey because as much as now it's a teamwork and these sponsors want this brand visibility to be so conspicuous out here, but the welfare of people carrying these brands. How should it now come up? Is it now going back to the contract best issue or now coming up now is as a team decision? Because as much as you're doing that big brand, yeah, you're actually in poverty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that happens. That can happen. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> with uh, some of these contracts, as just like any other contract, mm -hmm. uh, there are issues of uh, difficulty. Your difficulties arise. For example, yeah, they are open to amendments, mm -hmm. negotiations. Mm -hmm. Uh, if, are, if, if one part is not satisfied with the terms, okay. other than just termination, mm -hmm. they are open to amendments. So if one, one part is not too comfortable, okay. this is something that can usually be talked about. Okay. Yeah. okay. Now, l let's go back to content creators, producers, and all these people, because there's so much fight even going on right now as you're speaking about original content. Um, uh, plagiarism also on the rise here in the country, uh, even photos, goodness. Mm. For your own photos, like you could have a photo like a billboard. Now you wonder, how did I get there? Yeah. No one communicated. Now, consent of your photo being used somewhere. You might be seated somewhere having fun with your family. Someone takes your photo, and after two weeks, you find your photos in some posters somewhere. So, following up on these people also has been has proved futile. Now, tell us about now just trying to approach this in a, in a very orderly manner and also in the help of lawyers because people are suffering out here, especially photos yeah yeah you know with the advent of digitization the content creation has been very easy yeah, anyone with a smartphone can just come up with something and post yeah, yeah. We, which is good it, like uh, we've come up with the likes of uh, people i like for example people like desago and uh, professor they come up with their own stuff put on social media generates a lot of uh, uh, interaction yeah. comments yeah. and people like it yeah but then uh, the, an issue arises where your, 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 your image or your uh, video is used in a manner that you do not like, you've not yeah. approved of it. Yeah. Yeah. And this comes back to the point, brings me to the point where I said that our laws are, are not really, <coughs> they're not really like our statutes themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they don't cover some of these things that mm -hmm. are emerging. Mm -hmm. uh, you'd find like the Trademark Act of uh, 1995 of Australia mm -hmm. covers these things like uh, where a, a, a trademark is used in a manner that uh, infringes the, the, the intellectual property or right of the owner mm -hmm. or where a photo is used in a manner. You'll, you'll not actually find these in, in the legislation themselves. Okay. Although there's a, there's a 2013 case uh, in the Kenya High Court okay. that uh, that was decided by Justice Waweru. Mm -hmm. This was Rukia Idris against um, some hotel. Mm -hmm. Uh, what had happened is that they'd used to, she used to work at the hotel and then they used her image to promote the hotel okay. uh, in marketing mm -hmm. without her consent. Mm -hmm. In that case, the damages that were awarded were in the region of 300,000. Mm -hmm. uh, although I do, uh, what she did not specifically ask the court was an account for profits. Like okay. uh, you remember the account of profits, the account yes. for profits we talked yes. about. Like, yes. You've, 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 you've benefited, earned from you've my earned image. from my image, yes. so yeah. account for it, account for, yeah, it. Account for the, the value of the, what my image has brought to you. Okay. So it was 300,000 just on the, on, the, on the arm of uh, breach of property rights, of, but, but, of, but of privacy rights. I think it should be more, it should be more than 300,000. Well, <laughs> it was just uh, a violation of, uh, okay. of rights, okay. because okay. if okay. you look at our statutes, it's mm -hmm. not really covered, okay. so it was just based on right to privacy anyway yeah. sure um f uh, photos we have even instagram pages twitter pages that have um different photos for example i run my page but i have someone's photo now this person when he or she gets hold of me maybe w what should they do because now we have these cases for example the other day Anna, um, a, a lady was complaining on social media about her image being used like an, an semi-year in botch 
mm. and after kazi and she's very desperate she can do anything in the house and she came out and said this is not me mm. please kind of uh, just avoid uh, it's kind of damaging also yes. now it's so hard to trust these people who are doing this yes. now uh, uh, is there any law that can actually just pro uh, maybe help people to now come up with these stringent and strict ways of getting rid of these people uh, well, uh, there are amendments that were made by Parliament that uh, people really uh, uh, came up in arms mm -hmm. against okay. uh, the Security Laws Amendment uh, Act uh, that had provisions to cover these things. Then there was the issue of uh, bloggers and the issue of people just posting whatever they want. Yeah. But still, I even, you know, you remember that was uh, certain sections of that act was declared unconstitutional, in yeah. including the one that would have dealt with such a situation. Yeah, yeah. Still, it is uh, possible for someone to come up with uh, a suit for breach of the right to privacy. Okay. Uh, if someone, or, or even defamation, because uh, if someone is asking, say, saying that perhaps th there are things that you do yeah, that yeah. that you don't usually do mm -hmm. that uh, put you in bad or mm -hmm. in bad light mm -hmm. with the society mm -hmm. then you have a right to sue for defamation mm -hmm. although you raise a good maybe, point yeah. yes mm -hmm. that uh, with people using pseudonyms uh, yeah. on, 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 on uh, social media yeah. it may not really be easy okay because in order for you to sue someone then <laughs> there has to be a defendant you have, you have to find who this defendant is absolutely yeah, so absolutely that is a problem sure yeah. thank you so much Bonamuga, for yes. coming to studio we really really learned a lot. Of course, tomorrow um, from 11, a.m., from 9 a.m. actually to 11 a.m., there'll be a session at the uh, U.S. Embassy about um, uh, the intellectual property and inclining to the digital age, what is happening to the world. And of course, that session will be very, very important from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. All right, now, uh, just hold on right there. When I'm